have you seen articles in youtube or any other places or videos or people talking in general about how god is partial and how he's giving things to some people but how he's depriving the rest of the society from basic necessities from basic requirements from those things without which some people cannot live or anybody in fact so the question is many times people accuse god of being partial sometimes all right so today we will see what kunti devi has to say pertaining to god's partial nature or god's impartial nature all right so there you go we are continuing from shrimad bhagavatam's first canto 8th chapter 28th verse 1.8.28 and we have been doing this gita series from long time and i have been doing the queen kunti prayers so if you have not watched the videos in this playlist then please go and watch and yes if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me go to the website in the link below and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and today we will put god in the court <laughs> all right so 1.8.28 mane tvam kalam ishana anadi nidhinam vibhum samam charatam sarvatra bhutanam yan maithi hakalai so the translation is my lord i consider your lordship to be eternal time the supreme controller without beginning and end and the all pervasive one in distributing your mercy you are equal to everyone the dissensions between living beings are due to social intercourse okay so now let's see what's there in the purport Kunti Devi knew that Krishna was neither her nephew nor an ordinary family member of her parental house. She knew perfectly well that Krishna is the primeval lord who lives in everyone's heart as the super soul Paramatma. Another name of the Paramatma feature of the lord is Kal or eternal time. So this is how you we read. So if we find a reference to something in a particular scripture then we also try to see in which other uh, scriptures is this mention okay for example it's mentioned here that krishna is the primeval lord so where is this mentioned ishvara parama krishna satchidananda vigraha anadir adir govinda sarva karana karanam that's there in the brahma samhita then one who lives in everyone's heart as the super soul where is this mentioned yes this is also mentioned in the gita ishwara sarva bhutanam riddeshe arjuna tishthati ishwara sarva bhutanam riddeshe arjuna tishthati i reside in the heart of all living beings lord krishna says in the gita so then we will have a better understanding of how to read these holy books now eternal time is the witness of all our actions good and bad and thus resultant reactions are destined by him so it said here that krishna is there in everybody's heart as parmatma but the another name of that feature is kal or eternal time which ultimately destroys everything krishna also says in the gita kalosmi so it said here that time is the witness to all our actions both good and bad and it decides the results of the reactions so whatever we do it is good or bad time is always noting it so depending on that we will reap the actions in the future it is no use saying that we do not know why and for what we are suffering we may forget the misdeed for which we may suffer at this present moment but we must remember that parmatma is our constant companion and therefore he knows everything past present and future future so basically it said here that we may think that oh we did something wrong 
and then we forgot but Krishna is always there in the heart so he's always noting down that yes this time you did this good this time you did this bad so he never forgets and Krishna also says in the Gita that I know the past present and future and because and it, and it said here that because he's our constant companion and therefore he knows everything past present and future so Krishna never leaves us so that is why he notes everything down and one who knows this actually will be fearful to commit sin because he will know that somebody is always noting down my things and because the Paramatma feature of Lord Krishna destines all actions and reactions, he is the supreme controller also. Without his sanction, not a blade of grass can move. Wow. So he is the ultimate uh, person who sanctions everything. So if he does not want, then nothing can happen in this world. The devotees of the Lord do not misuse their freedom and therefore they are the good sons of the Lord. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> Others who misuse freedom are put into miseries destined by the eternal Kaal. The Kaal offers the conditioned souls both happiness and miseries. It is also predestined by eternal time. As we have miseries uncalled for, so we have happiness also without being asked. For they are all predestined by Kaal. So we do not search for misery. Like nobody wants, uh, nobody goes uh, to anywhere and he or she says that give me some disease but that comes automatically. So similarly, happiness also comes automatically. No one is therefore either an enemy or friend of the Lord. Everyone is suffering and enjoying the result of his own destiny. There you go. This destiny is made by the living beings in course of social intercourse. Everyone here wants to lord it over the material nature and thus everyone creates his own destiny under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. So God supervises. He is all pervading and therefore he can see everyone's activities. And because the Lord has no beginning no, or end, he is also known as the eternal time, Kala. So the thrust of this purport is that God sanctions whatever uh, we want to do in this world if that is there in our karma but it is we ourselves who decide to take that action. So many times uh, people say that uh, oh God is the supreme controller then why is he allowing me to smoke a cigarette? Well he is the ultimate controller in an absolute sense that without his sanction you cannot use your fingers and take the cigar into your mouth but it is you who has decided to do that i mean you could have used your hands to light an incense also yes you could have done it like for example here but you didn't do that that would have also been sanctioned by god himself but instead you decided i will pick a cigar and i will smoke so that will damage your body so the repercussions will come very soon you may not see it now or you may see that people who are doing all all these nonsense uh, they, they may be very happy in their lives but internally they are dry they are empty they are suffering they are miserable they are they're disgusted with themselves that is the only reason they are doing all this stuff so we do not have any right to blame god over ours or the problems of this world because it is we only who have decided to uh, do those kind of activities in the past the repercussions of which we are suffering now so whenever you hear this word that oh god is partial he's giving somebody more or less no that's not the case but there's something very interesting which is mentioned here it's mentioned that the devotees of the lord do not misuse the free will Yes, they do not misuse their freedom and therefore they are good sons of the Lord. And otherwise who misuse freedom are put into misery is destined. So, when we know that we have the free will to do good activities or bad activities, then we should use our free will properly instead of 
using it to do wrong activities those activities which are not sanctioned by scriptures especially the shrimad bhagavatam of course because that's known as the amalam puranam yes that's the crest jewel uh so therefore whenever we will use our free will to do activities that displease god then we will have uh, repercussions for that we we will have to face the reactions and then later on uh, we cannot just sit and cry and keep blaming god like there's something very interesting which because i stay in germany so uh i read an article once that after the world war was over world war 2 when germany lost that so what happened was uh, most of the ladies many ladies in fact may not be everybody most of the ladies who lost their husband and their sons in the war uh, they became atheists not only in germany in many parts of europe so why they became atheists because they said that oh uh, we were pr- praying to god please protect our husbands please protect our sons but or please protect our fathers but he didn't protect you saying god is cruel he is very nasty he likes to do killings well but uh, they will never ask this question to themselves that who in the universe told you to support a demon like adolf hitler that nobody will uh, say all right so that they will only to they will only say oh we support hitler we support the killing of jews we support everything and then if your husbands your sons your father they die then oh god is to be blamed you see so that's how people are so that's very it's quite funny actually for me to see that whenever you do something then you don't think of god but when the reactions come that time you will always think of god because you need to blame somebody right because you don't want to take responsibility for your own reaction so this verse is now uh, very instructive in that way that when we take responsibility for our own reaction own actions then uh, we will uh, we will understand that if we are doing wrong activities then there will be wrong things which will happen to us and if anything wrong is happening to us it itself is a proof that we had done some wrong activity to somebody so now whatever we have done that we cannot change either ways but we can ensure that we do not do uh, nefarious activities from now on itself at least at least from now on or avoid to whatever extent possible depending on our habits and at the same time we should read uh, scriptures like the bhagavatam gita or the rama and the mahabharat that will that will encourage us to do good for ourselves and for others and for society and then we will realize that our life is gradually improving now externally sometimes what happens is when we do spiritual practices it doesn't mean that suppose you are having some financial struggle the struggle will go away it doesn't mean that because that is one of the results of our previous karma maybe we had cheated somebody in our past lives and that person the, the people in this life they have ended up cheating us so just because you chant some mantra or you read shrimad bhagavatam it does not mean that everything is going to be like the heavens but what happens is when we read these scriptures our inherent disposition changes our our ability to respond changes so suppose a person who is not having knowledge of the scriptures or he is very atheistic primarily so then it can happen that when something bad happens to him he may also decide oh this world is unfair i will also be like this but suppose a person who knows this verse who has read this verse who who, who is hearing this video then he will know that no actually it is not that the world is unfair or it is not that uh, god is punishing me it is my own actions which are punishing me and god is simply sanctioning them so if bad actions can punish me then good actions can reward me also later so that is why we should always uh, be uh, contemplating on how we can do good for ourselves first and then for the society and that includes many activities like reading the reading books like bhagavatam then visiting holy places chanting the holy names of god yes taking prasad 
then uh, doing archa vigra worshiping the deity form in the home and going to the temple and taking darshan of god and doing yagyas doing home so many things are there in the vedic canon you see so that's the thing we got to take responsibility for our own actions and then we will realize that whatever is happening to us is a result of our own karma all right and then we will stop blaming god and that's what he said that the devotees of god they are using the freedom properly so if we use the freedom properly then we will be given more freedom it's like uh, the president or the prime minister of a country he has lot of power but suppose he misuses his power then what happens the people the very people who had elected him will pull him down and then he will lose all his powers all right so that is what is the thrust of this verse take responsibility do good activities and then understand that whatever bad is happening to you is because of your own karma your own actions in the past all right there you go if you are new then like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation go down to the link below okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye